Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. I'm going to do a little tutorial today. Uh, I don't normally do these, but I have a, a minute tonight and I've been wanting to do this for a while because I've had a few customers ask me about it. Uh, I'm going to show you how to make a very simple and easy uh, battery backup circuit. Uh, it's, it's easier than you think it would actually be. All it really requires is two power sources. In this case, I've got my main power source, which is 9 volts, coming from my power supply right here. Obviously, my input ground line. Uh, a 9 volt battery. Uh, if you're not familiar with the battery um, circuit, this is a single cell battery. The longer line indicates the positive, and the shorter line indicates the negative. If you put those in series, you'll actually put a few batteries in series, you'll see a few long lines, followed by a short line, long line, short line. Anyway, that's beside the point. Um, what you want to do here is, uh, it doesn't matter if you use different power supplies. So this can be 12 volts, this can be 9 volts, it doesn't really matter. In this case, I'm going to use roughly 9 volts coming from my DC power supply and a 9 volt battery. Now, uh, these are two standard diodes. I'm using 1N4001 diodes. And what they essentially do is act as one-way paths. So, as you can see, I've put arrows on here. On a diode, there's there's two sides to a diode, the positive and the negative. Positive side is the back side of the triangle, or the beginning side of what I like to call the arrow. Uh, this is called the anode, and that's your positive. And the side with the line on it, or the negative symbol, as I like to call it, just when I'm teaching, is the uh, cathode. That's the negative. So, p positive power can only run this way through a diode. If I turn the diode around, then this 9 volts will be blocked and nothing will happen. So as you can see, I've got positive 9 volts going through a diode, and uh, I've got another 9 volts going through this diode. So if one power supply gets knocked off or turned off, the 9 volts coming from here can't go back through this diode because it's blocked. And the power, if this power supply gets knocked out, this 9 volts can't travel through this diode. So here is our uh, our load, which is in this case will be an LED bank because I'm actually going to show you an example of this in a minute. I'm going to wire up this exact circuit. This is a, uh, a re essentially a resistor, but it's signifying whatever you're loading, whereas it be a motor, a digital circuit, or a light bulb. Uh, again, in this case, it's an LED bank. Now, this, uh, for those of you who don't know, this, this symbol is uh, the ground sign. So meaning this is connected to the negative side of the battery and the... Uh, secondary side of our load which uh, is actually an LED bank so that's there's a negative side to that and a black wire so again what will happen is uh, say I've got 12 volts here and 9 volts here um, and my 12 volts gets knocked off it get, it, we get a power outage what will happen is this 9 volts is sitting here and it's not discharging because the primary the primary source, the 12 volts on this one, will actually be powering the load. Whereas this one will just be staying dormant, staying quiet until oh, all of a sudden this one this one falls this one falls out, the uh, power goes out, and all of a sudden this one kicks in right away. And this doesn't skip a beat. However, what will happen is the voltage on the load will go from 12 volts down to 9 volts. The power the voltage source that that's uh, larger will be dominant over the load. So this is why I would use a typically a larger voltage here, like 12 volts, and a smaller voltage here on the battery, because this is a constant power source, this is a battery. The battery will die. Now this is a basic circuit. Uh, you can actually add a little resistor here, so that uh, it charges a battery, but 9 volts that I use typically aren't rechargeable, and you wouldn't want to add, uh, you wouldn't want to add uh, a resistor there. But again, if you have, what I can do is, if this video is popular enough, I can show you some different variations of the circuit. But for all intents and purposes, uh, nine volts, nine volts. If one of them kicks off, then nothing will skip a beat right here. And I'll actually show you two different examples. First, I'm going to show you the example without the multimeter, and then I'm going to show you the example with the multimeter. So just hold on for one second. So what I've got here is my circuit. This is my load, which is a 12 volt LED bank. It actually works down to 8 volts. And up here, if you look up here, I've got my two diodes. Uh, you might not be able to see them very well, but um, they're configured exactly as uh, they are in that uh, on that piece of paper I showed you back there. Got a 9 volt connector, and I've got my power supply here set up to 9 volts. So what I'll do is I will turn on my power supply and I'll plug in my battery power supply on and uh, battery connected 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to unplug this. Unplug. My primary source is gone. I'm going to plug it back in just to show you that the same goes for the battery. So I can unplug the battery. And it doesn't skip a beat. So you can use this with a digital circuit as well. It's flickering there a little bit because the voltage on the 9 volt battery is slightly higher than the voltage on the uh, on the power supply. So basically the battery will feel a little bit more power into this. Now what I'll do is I will show you this. What I will do is I will power the uh, LED light with uh, my, ma my main power source at 12 volts and my battery which is at 9 volts. So when I unplug my main supply the so the load on or the voltage on my load, which is my LED bank, will only be nine volts from coming from the battery, so it won't be as bright. But I'll also hook up a multimeter so you can see exactly what's going on. Right now, my uh, power supply is set to almost uh, 12 volts. Now it's wavering a bit because my power supply has some ripple on it. <coughs> now, if I unplug my mains, what will happen is this should drop down to about 8.5 volts, 9 volts, depending on how much voltage is on the battery. So I'm going to unplug my main supply. As you can see, the voltage on the uh, LED dipped, or sorry, the brightness on the LED dipped, uh, and we went down to 8.32 volts, so I'll plug it back in again. It'll go bright again. So it doesn't matter what voltage is on your secondary, but as a battery backup, it's usually a good idea to make sure that your battery is a little bit lower voltage than your main supply. This helps if you have a 7805 5 regulator circuit because 9 volts is more than enough and 12 volts is more than enough to regulate down to 5 volts. So if this, was, if this load specifically required 5 volts, then there would be absolutely no dip or spike on it. So I unplugged it again, plugged it in. Now if I, uh, if I, plug, if I unplug the battery, you should notice absolutely no difference because the battery isn't consuming, isn't sourcing any power right now because it's not the dominant supply. So I hope that makes sense to you guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show you one more thing about the diodes because you might not know how to determine what's an anode and what's a cathode and a diode, or rather what's a positive and a negative. So I'm going to show you and then I'm going to end the video. Now I should have mentioned this before, but I'm going to show you how to tell um, how to tell what's what on a diode. This is what a, a diode looks like physically, your standard diode, your standard rectification diode or power diode. You can't see from here, but on the diode there's a black side that takes up the vast majority and then there's a white stripe at one end. The white stripe is the negative end, which is also called the cathode. The side with the black on it is called the anode, which is positive. Now, again, this is the physical representation. This is the schematic symbol. The base of the triangle is the positive side and the negative side has the has the uh, the line across it that's the negative side so if you want to look at it this way power positive power can flow through like an arrow this way but it's blocked if positive power comes this way because there's a wall here that's just one way of looking at it that's the way I looked at it in school so anyway um, short but sweet tutorial I hope you found it helpful uh, there's always a lot more to the picture but this will work for really any basic battery backup circuit that you'll have. Just remember that your primary source, your the source with higher voltage, will be the will be the supplier to your load. Sorry, I realized that the uh, there we go. So if you've got 10 volts here, 9 volts here, your main supply will power the load. If you've got 6 volts here and <coughs> uh, 4 volts here, this will be your the supplier of power. Uh, 2 volts, 5 volts, this is going to power your circuit. One last thing, diodes such as the 1N4001 uh, have a, uh, will have a drop across them. So if I've got 5 volts here, I will likely see about 4.3 volts here. Uh, and if I had, say, 12 volts here, I'd see about 11.3 volts here. So there's a drop of about 0 0.7 volts or 700 millivolts. That's it. Thanks for watching the tutorial. I hope you all like it.